Hey, so so when we're born, right, in those early years, we we learn, I believe, quite a lot of things. A lot of people say the first four years of your life you don't remember. I wouldn't know. I'm I'm inclined to agree because I can't say that I remember. But I feel that in the that time and in those times, what we are taught isn't necessarily how we what we learn. And, and I think that remains the same throughout the course of our lives because however the intent is for the message that somebody shares, whatever the intent for it is or what you're actually trying to teach, isn't necessarily how I'm going to perceive what is being taught. But also, that's how God, I also feel, works a lot of the times is He gives you the message that you need to hear through that. And if you go listen to that very same message on another occasion, at a different stage in your life, at a different place in your life, um, you will maybe learn something else but we begin life of a very much selfish nature i feel you know one of the very first words you learn is mine and if you and, and if you disagree with me if if you say we don't grow up selfish that early then why else would we need to be taught to share it's interesting thinking like this and and this is the example that god brought around my mind this morning about is actually what I want to speak of a little bit this morning is you know Paul writes in Corinthians he says imitate me as I imitate Christ and a very selfish a very mine like behavior isn't very Christ like is it <laughs> you know so the whole sermon that Jesus teaches in Matthew 5 that whole sector is is so profound it's such so amazing really if you think about it if you don't overthink it, a lot of people tend to try and overthink it because we are doing this leaning on our own understanding business, which we sh shouldn't be doing in the first place. Instead of listening, we try and overthink. You know, we just need to listen what Jesus is trying to say. And if we learn his heart behind this, it's actually so simple for me, I feel, that um, that he does come through, you know, in, in a lot of the spaces, you know, we, we just, he just starts it off by saying, blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed are those who mourn, blessed are the meek, blessed are, are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, blessed are the merciful, blessed are the pure in heart, blessed are the peacemakers, blessed are those who are persecutors, for, who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So, you know, he's, he's just, look at the, I think that speaks to the humble side of where we need to be. And and that whole sermon, as we go through, Jesus comes there and he speaks about everything. He counters everything that people are taught, you know, to love your um, love your friend and hate your enemy and or, or love your ally and hate your enemy. But Jesus says, love your, I tell you to love your enemy and pray for them. And, you know, if somebody hits you on the one cheek, turn the other cheek. It's all these things that Jesus comes to teach us, which is, Oh man, it's a different kind of behavior than what we're used to. But if you really think about it, that's how he walked. That's what he did. There's no way where you see that he fought, that he went outright and tried to fight people. He was always a servant. Yes, he challenged people, but never in an aggressive state because he knew the will of his father. He was aligned with what God wanted him to do. He was aligned with what God's plan was as well. Yes, we know that he is God. And when Paul writes, imitate me, as I imitate Jesus, we need to strive toward that perfection. And even in Ephesians 5, verse 1 and 2, it says, Therefore be imitators of God as dear children, and walk in love, as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. I love that word it uses there. 1 John chapter 2, verse 6 also, also says, he who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk just as he walked. So this is also this also speaks to be careful what you are saying. Don't say you're trying to be like Jesus, but your walk doesn't say it. If you talk the talk, you've got to walk the walk. And Jesus definitely did that. We know this. We saw this. And it doesn't mean we're not going to have challenges. It doesn't mean we're not going to make mistakes along the way. We're still human in the end of the day. And we need to strive to be imitate. To imitate doesn't mean, you know what I mean? Do you understand what I'm saying? So you're trying to be like Jesus because he was the perfect example that he set for us. 1 John 
chapter 3 a little bit further than the previous verse. In verse 7 it says, Little children, let no one deceive you, because he who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. So if we are imitating Jesus, we are practicing righteousness. And here he says, you are righteous if you practice that. But it doesn't mean you you practice that. Remember, God still looks at the heart. So you can deceive me. You can deceive the people around you. You can deceive everybody, wherever it is you stand, wherever it is you are. You can deceive them because they only see this. And if you're a great actor, we're going to believe you. The problem with that is God looks at the heart. He sees inside. You can't cheat him. So it's about being truthful in your behavior. It doesn't mean you're not going to have things that you still struggle with along the way. You've got to remember this. This is important. But God is there for that. Because if we, you know, I don't think we can be perfect because, you know, the Bible says in, in verse 48 of chapter 5, he says, therefore, you shall be perfect just as your heavenly father is perfect. I don't, I think yes and no, it can, it can mean we should be perfect because it, we, we get become perfect in our behavior, in the way that we, but we still fall short. We still fall short because if we can be perfect, we wouldn't need Jesus. We wouldn't need God if we are perfect. You understand what I'm saying? We're not without fault. And, and, and again here, you know, as long as we strive. But if we were perfect, we wouldn't need God. So we need to just perform the task the way that Jesus taught us. Living and serving the way that he did. That's what we strive towards. Walk like he walked. Talk like he talked. It's imitating him in our way. In the way that we were designed to. To fulfill wherever we, it is we need to fulfill. To walk in the calling God has fallen. To stay in your grace. To walk in your lane. To the best of your ability. You know, I think one tends to struggle less once you are on your walk on your strong sides, in the stuff that you are strong in, in your strengths. When you walk there, you tend to struggle less. And that for me is a clear indication of where one's calling lies, where your grace lies, what God has called you for and to do as a sportsman, as a businessman, as a preacher, as a speaker, whatever, you know. But you are going to have stumbling blocks along the way because that's how you grow. That's how you perfect that area. That's how you become perfect as you imitate Christ along that walk. You know, but don't let people shut you down when you are trying. Because you should be focusing on your trying, not about what they're saying. Because they have no idea where you are, what you are doing or what you are busy with. And don't let your fault stop you from continuing your pursuit either. You've got to diligently pursue. You've got to diligently pursue jesus and even if it's in an undignified manner that's cool i'm very cool with that i don't mind looking silly for jesus you know and i feel that as long as we try and we run toward being more and more like jesus the more we become that perfect imitators that paul refers to in one corinthians so imitate me as i imitate jesus